nor is he worshipped with men's hand, as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and determine that and determine their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwelling, so that they may seek the Lord, so that so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grow for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Apostle Paul was saying that uh, when he was passing by, he saw the people, he saw an inscription saying, to the unknown God. That tells us that the people, they have a kind of desire to know God. But the problem is, they don't know who is that God. Take for example, if you go back into our, uh, our background, you see our parents, our great, great, great uh, grandfather or forefathers, they have this desire to know God. And that is why they come up with the, the idea of maybe an object. You see somebody uh, place an object and say that is his own God. I mean, it amazes me a lot. There, there is so much strong desire in, uh, in people to, to serve God. But the problem is they miss who is that God. I remember one time when I was walking. A lot of time we Christians, we, we tend to, uh, we try to ignore. We tell, somehow we try to feel shy or whatever. Or we try to suppress our identity. On the first day of resumption, when we started this job, this guy, because we were actually sitting next to each other, I was trying to set up my desk. The next thing I saw him, he brought out an object, a figure, like booty or whatever, small object, he just placed it on the desk. And I asked him in a very polite manner, that's just trying to find out maybe something or whatever. I said, what's that? He said, that's my God. No, he's, he's, he's very serious. I mean, it's not a joke. He was very serious. And uh, you dare not mess with him or make a mockery of him or laugh at him or do anything. That is his God. And he believed that the presence of that God is going to make way for him, is going to help him, is going to bring him prosperity, is going to bring him good fortune, good luck, whatever. If that God, if that God gets missing, then you have to find that. <laughs> but come here. Here is the problem. If I, as a Christian, if peradventure I bring out my Bible and I put it on the desk, people will start making talking in harsh tone. What's going on? I mean, you become. I mean that. You, it's like you are creating an unnecessary attention for yourself. Some of them will even question you, ah, we are Christian. Is it not the same Christianity? God? But the other fellow is not afraid. He's even proud to identify with his God. The funniest thing is that all these people that they call themselves Christian, when they see this God, they admire it. Some might even go to the extent of maybe they can, can we have something like that? I'm being realistic. That is the world we are living in. And that is the reason why Apostle Paul said to the unknown God, you have a strong desire to worship God, but you are getting it wrong. There is this urge in you, but you are missing the whole truth. Within all of us, there exists a strong desire to be known, to, to know others. Most importantly, there is a void in every individual, a quest to know their creator. Even if they are not professed believer in God, Apostle Paul expressed his desire to, to truly 
know God. And that is seen in the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. He says that I may know him, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made comfortable unto his dead. The only set of people that I can truly say that they face the fellowship of his suffering, the power of his resurrection, are people in China, Iran, you and me, we can, we can worship, we can come to church freely, we can, we, we can, we can, we can choose a venue for, 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 to gather and uh, worship and praise God. I have a friend, uh, the guy is in the... Uh, he works in Saudi Arabia. He's like the vice president of one or one of this bank. And the other time we were we were chatting, and he said, even for them to go to church, they do it in secret. They they hide in Saudi Arabia. You and I, we have the freedom to walk into church. We even have the freedom to carry the Bible. They know you are a Christian. You are not being harassed. It's not the same in in China. It's not the same in Iran. Some of these Muslim countries, not the same. You and I, we don't suffer such persecution. But Apostle Paul is saying that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering. So it's not only, his desire is not only in the comfort of God bless me. It's not only in the comfort of, oh, Lord, I need a breakthrough. But the desire to know him, to know the power of his resurrection, that is to be crucified with Christ. That is to be partaker of his suffering. That is to be counted worthy. His loyalty is to the end. And he's not afraid to declare it. So seeking to know God, seeking, seeking God is inevitable. Our desire to, to seek and know God is the essence of true life. I throw this question to you, to every one of us. Do you truly desire to seek God? Anybody? Do we have this urge in us to seek God? Are we sure? Are we really sure? Because I remember in those days there was this man I don't know, some of us must have listened to that song before. He's, uh, the man sang the song in, uh, in the Yoruba. Uh, the, uh, who, is the, who, is the, who is the man of God? He said he want to take vengeance. The guy said he walked into a church. He said he want to know the true man of God. The guy came. He held. Uh, he, was, he was fully harmed. He said he's going to want to take vengeance upon the man of God. The first person to run out of the church was the pastor, the choir, everybody. They left. He said they want to take vengeance upon. But Apostle Paul says that I may know him. I want to be partaker of his suffering. That I may know the power of his resurrection. Even when a man came to him that so be. So will they do to the, to the person that has this, uh, this uh, belt or whatever. He said let it be so. He was bold. He was comfortable. And the Bible made us to understand that he that is prepared to lose his life is going to do what is going to find it. So the question is, why are we afraid? Why are we are seeking God? Why are we always so comfortable when it comes to only issue of blessing, 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 blessing? Let us be partaker of his resurrection. Let us be partaker. Let us be partaker of his suffering. So that we may reign with him when the time comes. The thought of God should be paramount in our mind because they will determine the value and direction of our lives. We have, and that is seen in the book of um, Psalm 48, verse 9. We have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. And not only that, the man that said this is King David. He said, let the meditation of my heart be what? Be acceptable in thy sight. It's not only our expression that is important. A lot of time, God seeks into the heart. 
He looks straight into your heart. Because our God is what? He's a spirit. You cannot see him. He's not a physical object. The Bible says God is spirit. And they that worship him must do what? Must worship him in spirit and in truth. When it was time to anoint an, an, uh, David, the Lord said unto Saul, I mean unto uh, Samuel, he said, do not look into their do not look into their eyes. Do not say, oh, because this one is properly dressed, because this one looks matured, because this one looks like a uh, um, uh, maybe he's, he's been a friend, he's very close to the royal. No, it's not like that. He said, do not look into their, into their face. But God search our heart. A lot of time when we come to church, God looks straight into your heart. It's not your face. You can put up an appearance, I can put on an appearance that I'm holy and this and that. But deep within, the Lord search. At the point he said, these people worship me with their lip. But what? Their heart is what? It's far away from me. So the heart is more important to God. And that is why he said, guard your heart what? Diligently. Make an extra effort to guard your heart. Seeking God is an ongoing responsibility and a privilege for all Christians. We cannot say, oh, because we have a, we have a, um, we have a, we have a church gathering today, to next week, the church is not going to hold. No, that is not the plan of God. His plan is that we should continually be in his presence all the days of our life. So the Bible, admon the, the scripture admonishes us to script God wholeheartedly. It's one of the, it's one of the, it's one of the, uh, the law, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29. And it says, You shall seek, but if from 429, but if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, and if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So when you seek God with all your heart, with all your soul, you will find him. What does it mean to, to see God with all your heart? I'll give you a simple illustration. There are friends that may be per adventure, you see them on a daily basis. Those are friends. Your mutual friend, you see them every day. But there are some friends that you hardly see them maybe once in 10 years. And per adventure, every bad day, they make sure that they give you a call. That is in the heart. In the heart. A lot of time when you say, oh, you love somebody, it comes from the heart. When you say you hate somebody, it comes from the heart. You are seeing the fellow you haven't even seen before straight away. You don't even like the fellow. It comes from the heart. You are seeing somebody for the very first time. Oh, you say, oh, I like that fellow. It's from the heart. And the Bible will say, you will seek the Lord with all your heart and all your soul. That is in your mind, when you are walking, you are thinking about God. When you are driving, it's all about God. When you are at home, it's all about God. It is then that you can find him. And also, you can see God early in life. Psalm 63 verse 1. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee, my flesh long for thee, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. There was this song we used to sing in those days. I don't know, some of you might have heard it. It says, in the morning, early in the morning, in the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. Does anybody, has anybody heard that song before? <laughs> That's good. So, when we wake up in the morning, the first thing that we should do is to seek our God. He's our creator. 
To wake up is a miracle. To say, oh, you wake up is a miracle. Complete miracle. Many people slept last night. Where are they today? The earthquake that happened about a week ago, people were sleeping. And the land is opening, swallowing people, unaware. Even in their sleep, they are gone. So to wake up is by grace. So every time when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you should do is to seek God. And also, continually, seek the Lord. That is in the Psalm 105, verse 4. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. And with what? With joy. With joy. Psalm 70, verse 4. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, let God be managed. When you see God, you have to be joyful. Because our God is a king. If you remember the story of Daniel, when he said, oh, I'm not going to be a partaker of the king's meat. I'm not going to drink the king's wine. The eunuchs, they said, oh, no. Because the king must not know that you, you are looking lean. Your face is not shining. You are not looking joyful. You have to be presentable before the king. Our God is the king of kings. You have to always be joyful before him. There is no time for you to go to his presence, frowning praise of, or having a weary face. You must always go before him joyfully. And also... By prayer and supplication. Daniel 9 verse 3. It said, I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. So we can seek God by prayer. And fasting, we have to pray. We have to be very prayerful. Daniel was only a youth. And he was always praying. And true is righteousness. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. What is Righteousness. It's not your own righteousness. Because he even tells us that our righteousness is what? It's like a filthy rag. So it's not your own righteousness. One day I was reading my Bible and I came to the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17. Can somebody open that book for us? Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17. Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Yeah. That, that, sorry, ma. That's the, that's, the verse, that's the phrase I wanted to find out. Learn so it means you can actually learn to do good. Many of us, we go to our school to go and learn. You want to be a doctor? You go to school to learn. You want to be a lawyer? You go to school to learn. So you can actually learn to do good. When you see somebody doing something good, Admire it. Embrace it. You can do better. You can do good. You can learn to do good. We were not all born with this because our nature is sinful. Because King David said, "Only for indeed in sin was I conceived and I was born in, into this sinful world. And I was doing what? I was sharpened in iniquity. So when you see something, when somebody does something good, you can embrace it. You can learn from it. You can learn from it. So you and I can learn to do good. And we can do that every day of our life. And by studying his word, John chapter 5 verse 39, search the scripture. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. They are they which testify of me. So, 
We are encouraged to always read the word of God. To always read our Bible. Many of us are guilty of that. We all lead a busy life. But once in a while, you need to sit down. You need to read your Bible. A lot of time we claim, oh, I'm busy. I don't have time to this. I don't have time to that. But you just sit down. Just sit down. Half, two, three, five minutes to yourself alone. You deserve to have a time to yourself. Not with anybody. Just yourself. Sit down and think. You find out that you have that time. You have the time that you can read the word of God. You have the time to meditate on the word of God. You have the time. Even if you know, oh, I have a very busy schedule. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. It is not true. It is not true. There will be a moment when you can sit and when you can reflect on the word of God. When you are, can be back to your normal senses. Oh, you can claim, oh, I'm medically not fit. I'm not this. There was, that, 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 that was, a, that was a, a kind of a interview. This happened years back. They were conducting, somebody was conducting an interview in the middle of the night to mad people. People. It was then I knew that even people that we call mad around something, I don't know, I could be wrong. Midnight, around 12, 1 a.m., they, they always have a time when their mind is always, they talk like a normal person. I don't know. But maybe some minutes or some hours afterward, they go back to their default state. But there's always a split of maybe a few seconds or maybe hours when they think like a normal person. Afterward, they go back to their default state. So you and I, we have that time to ourselves. Sit down and reflect on the word of God. And you will see that you will be really blessed. Assuredly, those who see God under condition above stated, they will find aim. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. You see, the problem here is you are dealing with God. The moment, the way we are seated here, he knows what goes on in your mind. Maybe you are thinking of your next job. Maybe you are thinking of your bills or whatever. He knows he can see your heart. God is not moved by our look. He's not moved by our appearance. He goes straight because his spirit. You can't see him. And when you seek him with your heart, he knows. For somebody to tell me that to, to, to tell us that these people they seek me with their lip, but their heart is far from me. God is a spirit. So, when we seek him, we will be satisfied. And that is found in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall do what? They shall be filled. And also, when we seek him, we will understand all things. Proverbs 28, verse 5. Evil men understand not judgment. But they that seek the Lord understand what? Understand all things. And when we also seek God, we will not lack anything good. Psalm 34 verse 10. The young lion do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall do what? Shall not lack anything good. For the Bible to say that the young lion, we know when the lion is going on hunting, they are very aggressive. And even with that, the aggression and the might and the strength in them, the Bible says, they do what? They do suffer hunger. So it's not about your might. It's not about your strength. It's not about your skill. But it's all about the grace of God upon your life. May the Lord help us. I'm not sure we have enough time to continue today. May the Lord help us. As, yeah. Amen. Father, we bless your holy name. 
We thank you for your word. We pray that this world will prosper in any one, every one of us life today in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May we rise up, please. It's time to worship God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, can the children go to their um, church, please? Children, it's time to go to your church. Thank you, Lord. to appreciate the almighty God Father we bless your name we exalt your name we exalt your name Jesus we give you all the glory we give you all the honor thank you for the gift of life thank you because we slept last night and this morning your grace and your mercy woke us up. We thank you for even this week for how far you brought us. Thank you for preserving our lives. Thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Thank you for your grace, Almighty God. We worship you. Thank you for supplying all of our needs, O oh God, according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Thank you for daily loading us with benefits. Thank you because we have a sound mind. Thank you because we can think aright. Thank you because we can move our bodies. Thank you because we can stand. Thank you because we can see. Thank you because we can speak. Thank you because we can understand. Father, we have come to Mount Zion, the city of our God. Father, we have come before you. We have not come before any man. We have come to our Jesus, the one who died for us, our Savior, our Redeemer, the one who justified us. He left his heavenly glory. He came to this earth just because of the love that he has towards us. Jesus, we have come to give you worship. We have come to give you praise. You deserve all of our praise. You deserve all of our worship. Father, we thank you because you are here with us. And we acknowledge your presence here. Your word says we are two or three are gathered. There you are. So we acknowledge that you are here with us. And we thank you so much for what you're going to do in our midst. We exalt you, Father. We adore you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ah, 
Alléluia 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 in your presence where we can just praise you where we can just worship you where we can just adore you give you the praise give you the worship that is due to you we praise you Lord we adore you Jesus we magnify you Jesus we reverence you Jesus Thank you, Father.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You reign. You reign. And you are mighty on your throne. Thank you, Jesus, for reigning. Thank you, Jesus, for reigning. We adore you for reigning. We give you all the glory for reigning. We thank you for reigning in our midst, oh God. We exalt you for reigning in our lives, oh God. Thank you. Thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you all honor and adoration. Because, Lord, the reason why the world or why everything is against us, because you are the true and only and mighty God. And the world fears you. But because we know you, we love you because you first loved us. So, Father God, thank you for reigning in our midst, oh God. Everywhere that they are fearful of us, that we cannot boastful say, Jesus is Lord. Father God, you will go and reign in that place. You will go and reign in that place, oh Lord, that people will ask us, what is the secret of your peace, of your prosperity, of your joy? And we will boldly say, it's because Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you, oh God, because you continuously reign in our lives. And Father God, we will not be tired because of your grace that you have put upon us. We will move forward. We will proclaim your holy name till every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So thank you for reigning in our midst, O oh God. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we all put our hands together for Jesus? Can we just clap to the real King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lord God that reigns, the Lord God that commands peace all around us. Father God, we give you all the glory. And we thank you for this morning. Thank you, Jesus. You can all sit down for a moment. For a moment. Just for a moment. We are going to stand to our feet again. But we just want to acknowledge our Lord, our God, our King. That is mighty. You know, when something is good, the enemy fights. It's because our God is good. That's why they fight us every time, everywhere, nooks and corners. But we will not be down. We will not be put down. We refuse to be down. We will be elevated in the mighty name of Jesus. And everything that will make us, make our heads be lifted up, the Lord God will grant it unto us in Jesus' name. So, Father God, we just thank you for this moment in the mighty name of Jesus. We've been talking about character. Character, character. Jesus Christ is our character. What is your character? We were talking about knowing God and we were talking about the, 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 the Lord in our hearts. So where is Jesus? Are we just people that speak, that we just speak, we just read the word and we just speak? Or we are a set of people that magnifies the Lord in our hearts? So I'm going to say this morning, this time, you know, there's time for everything. We're going to give to the Lord. Where is your heart? You remember in the Bible, that woman that gave, the Bible described her as the, the, the best giver. That was the best gift. And how much did she give? Just two, was it two shillings? Or two pennies? Two pennies. Yes, she gave. That was her best. I'm sure somebody must have given a million pounds on that day, but the Lord God recognized her giving. Is the Lord going to recognize your giving this morning? It doesn't amount the amount, that's one. But the heart that is giving it, does God recognize that heart? So I'm going to say, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. If we can give joyfully this morning to the glory of the Lord, the Lord God that reigns in our midst, I want us to give cheerfully. And God sees your heart. This is the bank details of the church. If you want to give electronically, this is the details. And if you do need an envelope, you're going to give cash. Raise your hand up and an usher will give you an envelope. Thank you very much and enjoy this giving to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. 
for this worship that the Lord God has raised. We just want to thank God for this. Hmm. The devil is in trouble and he will continuously be put to shame in our lives in Jesus' name. Those that were here last week can understand what I'm trying to say. Father God, we just thank you. Thank you for the offering of worship and thank you for the lips that sang it. And at this point in time, we bring our offering unto you. This is our resources, oh God. We bring it to your throne and we lift it up to your holy name. And we say, Father God, God, God our resources. God our resources. God our lives, oh God, that our lives can bring these resources to your household. Father God, we thank you. All the pockets that has brought this out, Father God, you replenish in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for bringing us to a place of this place, oh God. Thank you for bringing us to this place. Thank you for bringing us out of the shadow of the valley of death. Thank you for bringing us to this place and hiding us, oh God. And that's you which you have given to us. We will never be ungrateful to you, oh Lord. We will always be able to reach in and come out with resources that will glorify your holy name. Thank you, oh God, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we praise the Lord? Can we praise the Lord, somebody? Somebody praise the Lord! Hallelujah! The Lord loves the cheerful giver. He also loves those that worship Him in spirit and in truth. If today is your first day, we can all sit down place in the presence of the Lord. If today is your first day of worshiping with us, we would like you to stand to your feet so that we can welcome you into the household of God. If today is your first day with us, Please stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. You're welcome, my sister. You're welcome. We can sing over you the glory of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome in the name. We can see all over you the glory of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, we love. 
Now so so blessing you go carry go You no go suffer like like God Now so he go be for you Blessing in the morning, blessing in the night Now so he go be for you Miracle in the morning, miracle in the night Now so he go be for you Favor in the morning, favor in the night You are loved with an everlasting love. We welcome you. If you don't have any household that you go to, we would not mind having you. But if you do, please stay faithful to your household. But you are welcome in our midst anytime, any day. So you're welcome, my darling sister. All right. Thank you very much, choir. God bless you. I could, we could stay here till tomorrow worshiping and singing to the glory of the Lord. But because of time, we are... Uh, we have to move on and we have to thank God for what God is doing in our midst. Praise the Lord. At this point in time, I am going to call a woman of God. She's a pastor. She's a blessing. Whatever ministry you find this woman, she's always a blessing there. I am going to invite Pastor Sumbo Ajala to come and be a blessing to us this morning. Praise the Lord. You're welcome, man. Praise the Lord. People of God, praise the Lord. Today is not cold now. Praise the Lord. Today is very warm, so we have to be at last. And the Lord will minister to us today in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we just thank you. You are a faithful God. You are a great God. Lord, we just exalt your holy name because you have loved us as a church and as a family. You have kept us and preserved us. Lord, we say thank you. King of glory, I come before you this morning and I ask, Lord, that you will take my lips and use. Daddy, the word that you have for your children, for each and every one of us, Daddy, please deliver it to us in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that no man, no woman, no child will live here the same in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Almighty God, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. After all my wine, I thought I had a bigger hallelujah than that. Praise the Lord. You see, we are a joy, joyous set of people. So everywhere we go, we have to show the joy of the Lord. They don't need to even ask us. When you hear praise the Lord, is our God, is our Father that we have been encouraged to praise. We should praise him with all that we have. Amen. All that we have. I think it was the German that says that with all my heart, with all my mind, everything, everything, my strength, everything has to go into when I'm praising the Lord, when I'm blessing the Lord. And the Lord will speak to us today in Jesus' name. The word I have for us today, by the grace of God, the topic is, Behold, I do a new thing. It looks like it's only Pastor Lord that is receiving that word. Oh. God is saying to us as a church, as a people that, Behold, I do a new thing. He's doing a new thing for you. Whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you understand it or not, the Lord will do a new thing for you in Jesus' name. And the first scripture that the Lord wants me to bless somebody with is, is in Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. He says, Say to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. Can you say to somebody beside you that it shall be well with you? For you shall eat the fruit of your doing. Praise the Lord. After I got married, I lived in my, my, my mother. I not lived with us. And her mother lived downstairs. And when you go and greet grandma in the morning, she will say, the Lord will reward you according to your doing. Me, I will say amen. Some people were afraid to say amen. When my father-in-law comes visiting, and mama says, Allah wa fi share ke. Allah wa fi wa ke. My father in law will not say amen. He will come back upstairs, annoyed that. He will say, What kind of prayer is grandma praying? I said, Daddy, what is in your hand? What is the work of your hands? If your work is according to the will of God, then that will be a, a prayer to you. But if your works are of evil, that will be a cost to you. So the Bible says that, Say to the righteous, it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. Brother, sister, you will eat the fruit of your doing. You will not labor for another man to eat. Everything that you are doing, you will eat. And I always like to tell people that when it comes to eating of your doing, the Bible says that the harvest is always much more than the seed. 
So I just think back, what have you been sowing since the beginning of this year? What have you been sowing that you will reap? If you sow good, you will reap good. If you sow evil, you will do what? Reap evil. The harvest will be much more than the seed. It will be in abundance, you know. So don't, don't even contend with the word of God because that's what he will do for you and for me in Jesus' name. So Lord is saying to us that he would, we will reap the word, we will reap the work, it's the fruit of our doings in the name of Jesus. So paraventure, what you've been doing since the beginning of the year is not worthy of a, of a harvest. Brethren, this is your time to change. This is the time for a turnaround. Amen? Because it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about God. God has something he wants to do in his house for his people. If you are properly positioned, you will, you will reap the reward. If you are not properly positioned, you will be, you'll be particular of a cause. We are not particular of a cause in Jesus' name. So the Lord has declared that it shall be well with us as we maintain a righteous life. I want us to, be, to note the fact that I'm saying a righteous life. Like I just said, in fact, it says in the book of Revelation, it says, I come quickly with my reward in my hand to give unto each man according as his work shall be. If God says he comes quickly, he comes quickly. And he will reward each and every one of us according to our works shall be in Jesus' name. I was thinking about last week, yesterday, and I was saying, it's already 40, 43 days since we said Happy New Year. Do you know that? 43 days have already gone out of 365 days of this year. And God is asking you, is asking me, what have you done with those 43 days? Yes, we've been fasting for so long, 33 out of them. But what have you done? What is the work of your hands? What have you sowed? Who have you helped? Who have you been a blessing to? Who have you shown Christ? I want you to ask yourself, because says you will do a new thing in your life. So ask yourself, what have I done to deserve that new thing that God wants to do in my life? What have I done to deserve something new that is good and favorably? Because our God is not a kalu kalu God. He doesn't, you, you, you won't reap what you didn't sow. That's just the truth. But when you sow, you will reap. And I pray that we would all reap what God has for us in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 to 19 says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now shall it spring forth. Hallelujah. Now shall it spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Praise the Lord. God is saying to you, my brother, my sister, that even if the place looks desolate and like a desert, he will make a way for you. He will make a way for me. Bless you, brother. Brother Patrick, thank you for receiving that. He will make a way for you. You may be in the midst of hostile people in your place of work, in your neighborhood, but God is saying he's making a way for you. So shall it be for you in Jesus' name. If you believe his word, it will come true for you. He says very clearly to us as a people that when we believe his word, we will be established. But if we believe his prophets, he said you shall prosper. If you want to prosper, brothers, sisters, I'm begging you, when the Lord sends his word to you, grab it and hold on to it. Hold on to it firm. Because that's what the word of God says. If you go to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, he says, And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. So shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Every day as you rise up, as you read the word of God, as you partake in prayer meetings and the word go forth, if you believe that word, you'll be established. The word of God is to establish you and I so that we will not be shaken. So if you believe his word, you'll be established. If you believe his prophets, you will prosper because the word that is declared to you shall come to pass in Jesus' name. I don't know who God is talking to here, but I'm trusting that you would hear from him today in Jesus' name. Now that scripture gives an injunction. It says an injunction not to remember the things, the former things. I don't know what you have achieved. I don't know what you have lost. I don't know what pains you have experienced. I don't know what joyous seasons you have experienced. But God says, don't remember them. Amen? That's tough, isn't it? Most of us, we sit on our accolades, the things I have done, who I am, the successes I have, the things I have achieved. But God is saying to you that you should know what? Don't remember them because he wants to do a new thing. And when he wants to do a new thing, it's not something that you are familiar with. Amen? So if you're thinking, it's the familiar that God will do for me. 
that's not it. It's to something new. It could be your place of work, it could be in your business, it could be in your education, it could be in your school, but God wants to do something new for you. It could even be your spiritual work. Maybe you are someone that has been dragging your feet. You've just been dragging your feet to God. Today you are hot, today you are cold. Today you are feeling depressed, today you are feeling happy. God is saying he's going to do a new thing. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. He said, you forget the failures of the past. Don't keep going over old history. Do you know that last year, I led 20 people to Christ. Praise the Lord. This year, come. where are you going? Forget about the formal things, brothers, sisters, and ask God for that new thing that he has for you, that he has for your life, and you will surely experience it in Jesus' name. Now, the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. If you are, I'm going to need someone to please help me read it because my system doesn't quite... Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. It says, to everything, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Do you believe that? There is a season to everything. Right now, what season are we in? We're in winter. Okay? Everything in life has a season. For all of us, we're going to have a season in life where we'll be full of successes and enjoyment. We're going to have a season where we'll be full, there may be hardship. Everything in life has a season. For a student, when they are studying, they feel it's difficult. When you are chasing them, go and do your homework, go and do your revision. They are like, what is mommy's stress today? What is daddy's stress today? But when they come back with those results and they passed, what season will they be in? They will be in season of joy. And God is saying to us as a church, as a people, he says that it is our time. It is our season. According to Psalm 102 verse 13, it is our time of favor, our time of mercy. It is our time of remembrance, brethren. It is your time of reward. I keep saying it, what I've been doing for the last 43 days. Your time of reward is now. My prayer is that somebody here will be able to go back and say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy upon me. Give me another opportunity because our God is a God of second chances. He doesn't close the door. While we're alive, he still gives us the opportunity to come back to him. He gives you the opportunity. I was saying it was, what it was that we're having a meeting. I said, God is saying to us that leave this tree. Let me leave this tree for another year. Maybe it would yield fruit. God is saying to you, if you have not been sowing seeds that is worthy of a reward, now is the time to change. Now is the time to be a blessing to someone. I don't know who that person is that you've been passing every day you go to work. You've been passing this person, despising him or her. God is saying it's the time for you to change. It's the time for you to touch a life. It's the time for you to make an impact. We will not miss our time in Jesus' name. So there's a season as an a time, brethren. And our time is now. Our time is now. My daughter met me up in Croydon during the week and she said, Mom, God is really good to us. And I was looking at this young girl. I said, why? She said, ah, you know, this time last month, you were looking for a job. You know, she, she literally broke it down that at least three of us were looking for a job in the house. And that now all three of you have a job. I said, God is good. It's a time and a season. And as we came to that time and that season and brethren, it's not just about keying into it. When you see God do it, Acknowledge that he has done it for you. Acknowledge that God has moved. Because when we come and we give testimonies, it's not because we don't have anything better to do. But because by the word, the Bible says that they overcame by the, by the blood of the Lord and by the words of their testimony. By our testimonies, we overcome. By our testimony, somebody is encouraged. By our testimony, somebody gets to hold on to God for what they couldn't hold on to God for. And the Lord will bless us as we, as we do so in Jesus' name. The third thing I want to bring out from that scripture read in Isaiah is that God says, I will do a new thing, something fresh, brand new. God is determined that it has to be something new. It will be unfamiliar to you, brethren. It will be something you are used to. He will take you out of your comfort zone. And you almost be thinking, did I ask God for this trouble? Because you are not used to that thing. So if you are expecting the same of the same, it's not that, that's not what God is going to do for you. It's going to be something fresh new, something uncomfortable for you. Something that you have to go back to God and say, how do I go about this? How do I move forward? Because if something can just move forward on your own, you don't need God. But you have to rely on him in this unfamiliar territory. And he will take you there in Jesus' name. So be ready for the unfamiliar, brethren. I don't know who God is talking to. Maybe you are, you're, you've settled in your comfort zone. And God is saying, get up, get up. I need you, get up, get up. Some of us will say, oh God. 
I've never witnessed to somebody before. Somebody will say, Lord, I can't fast. I fall sick when I fast. God is saying, it's going to be an uncomfortable zone for you. Rise up for me and make that change in your life. And Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, for us to receive this new thing, brethren, we must know it. We must know it because we'll receive a confirmation. It's not everything that is new that is for you. Amen. So don't let's say because God says it's going to be something new. We just jump into any first thing that, that looks strange and comes our way. You have to continue to talk to God so that you can receive that confirmation that this is your new thing. Because my new thing could be different from Brother Patrick's new thing. So I don't want us to think that any new thing, maybe you are, you are in one particular profession and the first opportunity somebody gives you to do something new, you start jumping into it. That's not what God is saying here. You have to know it. So you have to walk with God so I can receive a confirmation that this is the new for you. Not the new for your brother or your cousin or your sister, but the new for you. And God will help you to receive it in Jesus' name. And when God wants to do things for us, brethren, we have to be prepared to wait for him. If you remember when God promised Abraham a son, he had to wait 25 years to receive that blessing. In that time, he could have given up. He could have said, ah, I've tried. And he did say he had tried. So there's a tendency for you to feel that after all, God did not do it for me. What am I waiting for? Let me just move on. Brethren, be patient with yourself. I won't say patient with God. Be patient with yourself so that you can receive what God wants for you. And you'll receive it in Jesus' name. You have to believe in him. That's why I said that. That relationship is very key. When God told Abraham to go and kill his son, his only son. Brethren, did Abraham obey or not? He did. And he went forth with this son. But you know that it is, it is possible that he would have slaughtered that boy if he, was, if he had cut his communication with God. Because sometimes when God starts with us, we just run off. He has only started. We've already gone 10 miles. He says, turn left. You turn left and you run all the way down. You, you don't know when he says stop. That's why it's, it's key for us to note that I'm saying that God is saying to us, he's going to do something new, but it has to be done with him, not without him. Because when he told Abraham, to stop, look there, have prepared a ram for you for the slaughter. If he was not in communion with God, he would have missed it. Is that not so? He would not have seen, he would not have heard, he would have been oblivious to what God is doing. So I don't want you to miss what God is doing in the spiritual realm for you. And you will receive it in Jesus' name. And that scripture in by it says, I will even, I will even make a way in the wilderness. When he says, I would even, God is saying here that, he implies an addition. I've blessed you, but I would even do something even better. Something greater for you. And that's why we see in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 3. It says, I should seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what will be added unto you? Some other thing. A few other thing. Every other thing. So he says, I will even, I will even make a way in the wilderness. We don't normally expect to see a way in the wilderness, do we? But when God is doing it for us to look strange to us, you suddenly you see the strange thing like, how come there's water in this wilderness? You know, how come how come they are favoring me? After all, it's the same people that have despised me, insulted me, but then God will cause them to favor you in Jesus' name. I want us to look quickly at Ephesians chapter 3. So that we know what God is able to do and what He will do for you and I in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 3. And I'm going to read from verse 20. It says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. That is my God. He is able to do what? Exceeding abundantly above that which I can ask or think. So it means that what he can do for me, I can't even imagine it yet. I can only trust him. I can only walk with him. I can only lean on him. And when God, when I always tell my children that walking with God is like somebody being blindfolded and he says, turn right and you turn right. You're blindfolded. So you can't do anything but to turn right. If you don't receive any other instruction, you can't go further. That's the way we should walk with God as we go this year. And it will help us in Jesus' name. And there's something I want to note. I want you to note with this news that God wants to do in your life. It's not for your sake. It's not for you to be to become proud. It's not for you to become yes. I have arrived. I have achieved. If we look up the book of Isaiah chapter 48, I want us to understand why God wants to do something great in our lives, in our midst, 
in his church. Isaiah 48, and I'll read verse 11. Isaiah 48, verse 11. He says, For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. So God doing something new, something marvelous in your life is for whose sake? His own sake. It means that your life has to do what? Give him glory. It means that your life has to cause men to want to know him. Your life has to cause men to marvel at what God is doing. And I always tell people, my entire life is a living testimony. My entire life is a living testimony. So every stage I am in life, God gives me a reason to look back and say, you've done it again. You've done it again for me. You've done something new for me. And I'm trusting that that will be your experience in Jesus' name. Now, what do we as a church, as a people of God, hope to achieve? God is going to, this year, like never before, God is going to give us teachings that will stir us up. Teachings that will make you want to react. He says, if you turn at my word, what did he say we'll do? I will pour my spirit upon you. So if you turn at his word, he means you read, you read the word of scripture today, and God says, do not do this. And you actually take it to it. God says he will do what? He will pour his spirit. And is that his spirit that will enable you to do that which he wants you and I to do? The teachings will stir you up. The word of God must be given priority in your life this year. Brother Wally was saying this on this, that some of us will not even pray for a whole, we will not even read your Bible. But brethren, it must be priority this year for you. The word of God must be priority. Because like I said, the new thing he wants to do, you must be prepared to walk with him to achieve it in your life in Jesus' name. So we must give his place a place of prominence in our lives, in his church, so that he can achieve his purpose for our lives in Jesus' name. Whether you like it or not, batteries will be recharged this year in Jesus' name. Someone that is at the verge of giving up, God is saying that your battery will be recharged. But believe you me, my brother and my sister, your battery can't be recharged if you don't make yourself available to God. But batteries will be recharged. When we gather as a church, I'm assured that iron will sharpen iron. So when we come together as a church here, if I come and I've prayed, I've trusted God, and nobody else in the church has come. What do you think will happen to the fire I brought into the church? It will, it will go down. So you have to come like an iron, ready to, sharp, to be sharpened and to sharpen somebody else. So it means that we always have to be prepared. Maybe because I was a girl's guide growing up. And the girl's guide must always be prepared. So you must be prepared for every eventuality that may happen. Don't just say, oh, oh, I'm an usher. So therefore, I'm going to church to usher. You don't know whether God wants you to minister a word to somebody that you're going to usher and to church. So you have to come fully loaded, prepared for what God wants to use you for, what God wants to do in our lives, and to come to pass in Jesus' name. As a church, as a people, brethren, our days and nights will be filled with God's presence. It's just what God is saying to us, that our days and our nights will be filled with His presence. You will sleep, you will dream about God. You will wake up, you will hear from God. You would walk, you will hear God. You will get in, on the train, on the bus, in your car. You will see the word of God speaking to you everywhere. So I want you, more than anything before, cultivate the presence of God this day. Just covet and cultivate it in Jesus' name. I went for a training this past week. And one lady that was in my court, she came to me and said, Somebody, I don't know, some, there's something strange about you. And I said, what do you mean? She said, I don't know. Something that has just drawn me to you. The next day, I discovered that we were of the same birthday. I said, maybe that's what, what drawn me. She said, no, there's something peculiar about you. The next time, she said, I said, ah, sorry, I have to, you know, after the train, I said, I have to go. To, I have to go. She said, why? I said, I said, I have a prayer meeting. She said, that's, that's what drew me to you. She said, that's what drew me to you. There's something about you that shows that you're a child of God. I said, thank you. You know, that's what God wants from us. We shouldn't need to tell people that we're children of God. But she could just sense something different. So when I said, oh, Sorry, guys, I have to leave you. I said, Why? I said, I have a prayer meeting at 8, and it's almost 8. She said, well, that's, that's what drew me to you. There's something, there's an aura about you that I couldn't quite tell what it is. So God wants us to carry his presence everywhere we go. Everywhere we go, people should know that these people are different. And the kind of favor that the whole cohort received. At the end of training, they said, well, I think it's because you are here with us, because they are all just coming to our help, even without us asking. I said, that's the way God wants because I always believe that wherever I am, there has to be a difference. My presence must make a difference. What has been difficult for others must have a solution if I am there. Not because I'm doing anything, but because God is working on my behalf. 
Praise the Lord. So we need to be careful, brother, brethren, for what God wants us to do. God wants to bless us. He wants to help us. He wants to restore us. He wants to reignite us for his own glory and for his sake. And my prayers, I will not miss it in Jesus' name. So this is the wake-up call for you and I as a church of God, brethren. God is saying that you've been too much at ease. And the book of Amos chapter 6, Amos chapter 6, if I can just get to that very quickly, sorry. Amos chapter 6. Amen. Sorry, can you please project Amos 6 from verse 1? It says, Woe to them that are is in Zion, and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chiefs of the nations, to whom the house of Israel come. So God is saying to us, just the first part of that scripture, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. We become too much at ease. God is sorry. He says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. We have rested on our oaths. God is saying that you think you've arrived. You have not arrived. I'm not done with you yet. So we cannot sit back. We have to keep asking him, what next? Where else? What else? How else can I make an impact? Whatever you are doing for God, in the house of God, that you feel you have reached your potential, God is saying that you've become at ease. Ask me, what else? Where next? And he will move you to where he wants you to be in Jesus' name. So we have to prepare to build. Amen? We have to prepare to build. Jesus told Peter, he says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. My prayer is that God will find each and every one of us worthy for him to build his church in Jesus' name. When I was thinking about it, I was thinking about Ashford, how God has dispersed all of us in various areas of Ashford. And he's saying to you, my brother, he's saying to you, my sister, that area of Ashford where you are, you are to be the light. You are to be the light. You are to be the salt. Your presence must be felt by the reason of you being in that area, on that street, in that world, there must be a change for him. So if there is no change, you are at ease. Wake up. Somebody say wake up. Wake up. Tell somebody to wake up. wake up. You have to wake up because God says stop being at ease. That's not what he wants from us. He wants to build his church on you and I. He wants to use us for his glory where we are. He wants the whole world to seek him because of you, because of me. If that's not happening, ask yourself, God, how else can I do this? If you feel you've used all the strategies that you know to do, ask God, what's the new strategy? And whether we like it or not, when we pray, things happen. When we pray, things happen. So I don't want us to take for granted the fact that we pray. When we pray, things happen. When we pray for our neighborhood, for our community, things happen. Things are shifting in the spirit realm. And once it's accomplished in the spirit realm, we'll sit in the physical realm. The Lord will help us to do so in Jesus' name. Then God is saying to you, my brother, my sister, do not abuse that position of authority that he has given you. I don't know whether it's in your work, whether it's in your home. He has given you a position of authority. He says, don't abuse it. Hold it dear. Amen? Hold it how? Dear. So that you can use it to impact lives. And he says in, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. The Bible says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearer. What kind of things comes out of your mouth? When people see you in school, at work, what do you say? What do you have to say? How do they perceive the words that come out of your mouth? Because we may not understand that some people, the experience and the encounter they have of you, with the only experience and the encounter they will have of being a, of Christians and of Christ. So if you give them the wrong impression, you have failed good. If people leave your, if people leave your presence feeling that, oh my God, I don't want to meet that girl again. I don't want to meet that woman again. You have failed God. He said, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth because it takes a little while for people. Some people, it's only one impression they need. They won't even come back for a second impression. So let's be careful. Don't abuse our positions of authority, brethren. Also, we should avoid playing politics in church by, succumb, 
And when I say politics, don't succumb to outside pressure. Don't say, oh, this is how they do it. So therefore, that's how we have to do it. As a church, we're going to trust God to give us the word for the season. Trust him to cause us to move from A to B, from C to D, and would. We're going to need to make some tough calls. And when the tough calls come, it may not be convenient. It may not be palatable, but when God wants us to make tough calls, as a church, we're going to make tough calls. And as a people, I pray that you prepare your heart for what God wants to do for you. In Jesus' name. Also, God says to us that we should do the work. Do the work. There's a lot of work to do. It says that the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are what? They are few. So, brethren, God is telling you and I that we should do the work. I don't know where it is. You can see the church. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of work to be done. Many, very many departments that God needs people to come and function in, to come and use their talent. Some of you here, you are still you're looking at me. You are very good with customer service. You are very good with customer relationships. But for you to actually speak to someone, tell them about Christ, you keep your mouth shut. God is saying, what are you waiting for? There could be some, some people here who are so talented when it comes to finances, when it comes to management, when it comes to administration. But you hide it. You hide it. God is saying, do the work. Do the work. Ask yourself, what can I do for you? What am I doing for you? What would you want me to do for you? Because it's another thing doing a work that God has not sent you and doing the work that he has sent you. You have to learn that. When you do the work that God has sent you, you will receive a great reward. If you are doing the work that he has not sent you, may we not be like those servants that says, depart from me, you unfaithful servants. May we not be unfaithful. Because a servant can be unfaithful if he's serving at a position he has not been called to serve. But if you are serving at a position you have been called to serve, then God can call you and I faithful servants. May that be our testimony in Jesus' name. Also, God is saying that stop making scapegoats of innocent people. I don't know. When I, when I got down, I paused a while. I said, ah, what is that one? Scapegoats of innocent people. I don't know. Maybe it's somebody here that God is talking to. Maybe in your work there's somebody, something has happened, and you have to make a scapegoat. But we're also going to pray at this point. Say, Father, let me, come in. let me not become a victim of somebody else's error in Jesus' name. Please say that prayer. Say, Father, let me not become a victim of somebody else's error. May my children, my entire family, my husband not become a victim of somebody else's error in Jesus' name. Amen. So God is saying to us that we should also raise people. If you have a talent, use it to raise somebody else. Impact on somebody else. Lift somebody else's hands up so that they can achieve the potential that God has for them. May God help us to do so in Jesus' name. I want to just encourage us, brethren, if you have the time, take the, not if you have, take the time and study the book of Acts and let's learn from the apostles. Just take the time, study the book of Acts and see what God used the early church to do and ask God, what do you, what do you want me to do? And he will speak to you in Jesus' name. So God is saying to us as a church that we have a responsibility for this community in Ashford. We have a responsibility to stand in the gap for Ashford so that, and the nation, so that the will of God will be birthed in our community in Jesus' name. Brethren, I'm showing you that we are a people of faith. Christians can believe we will hold on to God to the end, and that's what God needs, people of faith, people who can believe the impossible. People who see what others cannot see. People who see progress and prosperity while others are not seeing it. And God wants us to hold on to our faith so that we can impact our community. Also, we're people that understand spiritual warfare. I don't know who God is speaking to here. Maybe when they say it's time to pray, you are thinking, we prayed yesterday. Like Brother Wally was saying, the fact that we had church last week and we minister the zombie that we won't have church this week. You are thinking, God, they are calling us to come and pray again. But why? God is saying, I've placed you here for such a time as this. So don't let yourself be found missing. Join the prayers. Call on God. Let's stand in the gap and we'll receive the testimonies in Jesus' name. Also, we have to be committed to level of, level of consecration required. He says, be ye holy, even as I am holy. So this work that God wants to do, I've said we have to walk with him. And the Bible says that he, he cannot behold iniquity. If you want to work with God, if I want to work with God, I have to ensure that I'm fit for purpose. Amen? 
I'm fit to be in his presence. I'm fit for him to use me. Because if I'm not fit, he cannot use me. Our God does not compromise. Amen? And it will not because of you or me compromise in Jesus' name. May we be fit for purpose in Jesus' name. Finally, God is saying that our prayer bids must be higher. So if you are thinking, after all, I pray one hour. After all, I join prayer meeting for one hour every day. It's not enough. Your prayer bid must be higher. Your personal prayer bid, your group prayer bid must be higher. So you have to come to before the Lord. Don't think anything is too small or too big for God to do. I remember growing up when I was quite young. If I'm looking for a pen, pen in the house, if I search everywhere and I can't find that pen, I'll just see that myself. I was the youngest girl. My son's just, oh, have you found that thing? I said, no. And I'm like, why are you not looking? I said, I'm waiting for God to speak. And I'll just sit somewhere and I'll say, God, please let me find this yellow pen because I need to return to wherever I took it from. And the next place I look, I will find that pen. So from a very early age, I learned to believe God that when I ask him for things, he will do it for us. So brethren, God is saying, let your prayer beat be higher. Whatever it is you think you are so in the place of prayer, up it. If you've been praying, some of us can pray for hours and just pray offhand. God is saying, from now on, pray with scripture. Don't take it for granted. Don't just start rattling your own words. He said, command me of the things that I have made. We should give him back his word and he would answer us. Because there's one thing God would always hearken to is his word. He says not one bit of his word go back unfulfilled. So right before he starts saying, Lord, help me, help me, look for the scripture that talks about help and pray to God. If you need a job, look for the scripture that talks about God empowering people and pray to him. Up your prayer game. Somebody say up your prayer game. And we must pray without season. What does it mean to pray without season? Praise the Lord, sir. Continuously, in and out of season, we should pray. Pray when you are happy. Pray when you are sad. Pray when you've achieved. Pray when you failed. Pray when something is missing. Pray when it is found. We should pray without season. And you must be strategic. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So brethren, as I prepare to round up, God is asking you, are you willing? Are you available? He says it's, it's, it's required of, of a steward. First and foremost, to be faithful. Are you willing? Are you available? Are you faithful? Because the person that is not willing or available, God cannot impact on him. For God to use you, for him to impact on you, you have to be willing. The Bible says that he called the twelve first to be with him. So when he called the apostles, their first responsibility was to what? To be with him. So it was after he called them to be with him. And they learned from him and they learned of him that he was able to send them out. A lot of Christians are not willing to be with him, but they want to go out. God doesn't want that. He says he called them first to be with him. So brethren, God is saying that reprioritize your life. Make your walk with him. When I say walk, I mean W-A-L-K. -W your walk with him. Make it paramount. Reprioritize your life. Your priorities, rearrange them. And there are many barriers that will come your way. Many barriers that will come your way. Because once you want to stand up for Jesus, the devil wants to knock you down. So be prepared for the barriers. Don't shy away from them. Don't run away from them when they come. Stand still. Stand tall. When you stand tall, it will make a way for you. The Bible says that the gates open for Peter of his own accord. But if Peter did not move, the gates will not open. Be ready for the barriers to come. And when it comes to preaching the gospel, it's, not, it's never convenient. Some people would look, they'll say, oh, when the time is right. There's never a right time. There's never a right moment. There's never a right opportunity. And we as children of God have to cultivate the habit of being in and out of season. Telling people about Christ. For some people, it could just be the fact that you see you're always joyful. Always singing. Always, they just know that this, this man is just always human. Some, they know what you're human. Whether you're praying, whether you're singing, they just always see there's a radiance about you. But that may be an opportunity to minister to someone. And like, I think it was the other brother Wally that preached the other day that he was trusting God for somebody in his office. And God brought that person to him. That's why the question, are you willing? Are you available has come? Because if we're willing and available, God will make a way for us. But if you're not willing and available and all we see are the obstacles, we're not ready for the work. 
if you see the obstacles and we're ready to go in, when Moses sends them to go and spy the land, some came back and said, oh, they're giants, we cannot overcome them. But we're told of those two that says, there are giants there, but the land is sweet. You know, it's blessed. If you see the blessings of God in the stations around you, it will come to pass no matter what God does because one with God is majority. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And as a church, brethren, I want you to just remember that prayer is the key. Prayer and your work with the Holy Spirit. Because I said, so that, I said before that this new thing that God wants to do for you, for me, we have to do it with him. We have to trust him. We have to lean on his word. And we have to allow his Holy Spirit to move in us and through us in the name of Jesus. Whether we believe it or not, God answers prayers. That's his default mode. That's his default mode. He answers prayers. Whatever it is we are asking him for, he is able to do it. But for some of us, he's saying, that's not what I want from you. I don't know if, um, if Pastor Akin's son, when he was 10, says, Dad, I want a car. If he would have been obliged to consider even getting him the car. So the same way with us. For some of us, our request to God is like a 10 year old asking God for asking his father for a car. And he's saying, This car is going to destroy this boy. I can't give it to him. But if the father knows that what you are asking for is for your benefit, he would give it to you. If he knows that you are asking with the right motive, he will give it to you. If he knows that your desire is to, is to declare his kingdom, he will do it for you. But if I'm asking God to bless me with something, and he knows my motive is not right, he knows that I want this thing because I want to stab past my neighbor. After all, my sister has this, I must, I must get it. He will not give it to you. If he knows that what you want to use it for will not give him glory, he will not give it to you. If he knows what you are asking for is going to destroy you, he will not give it to you. Because our Father loves us too much to do that for us. So my prayer is that we would understand what God is saying to us today. And we shall be blessed in Jesus' name. So God is saying that the season of drought is over. For you, for your family, the season of drought is over. But God is saying, brethren, be committed. Be focused. Don't be looking for what is not lost all over the place. Just stay with me. Stay with me and let me just lead you. Let me just guide you to where I want you to be. So God is saying that to us and he will help us to do so in Jesus' name. So seven things I want us to know regarding this new thing that God wants to do for us. He says the burden of the new must be word-based. Must be word-based, anchored on the word of God. Must be word-based, anchored on the word of God. Whatever it is God wants to do in your life, find the word and anchor it on it. So when you pray, trusting him with his word, you will see it come to pass in Jesus' name. That, sorry. Cool. The second thing is that it was the spirit led. It was the spirit led. We have to have total dependence on, on the Holy Spirit. When you take the word of God and the spirit of God, you can't go wrong. If you take the word of God and you are running with it and you don't have, you are not, thank you, thank you. And you are not mindful of the spirit of God. Brethren, you just carry the letter, not the spirit. The Bible says that the word of God is spirit and it is life. The reason why it is spirit is because the spirit of the Holy Spirit is in his word. So if we read the word of God like a storybook, you'll miss it. But if you read the word of God and you meditate, trusting the Holy Spirit to expand the word to you, you'll receive the blessings that are there in new every day. New every day. you read the same scripture and he will show you something and I'm like, where did this come from? After all, I've been reading this over and over and over again. But the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The third thing I want us to, to note is that a significant, a significant amount of the praying needs to be done in tongues. Because there's a limit to what you can pray. There's a limit to how much English or Yoruba or Igbo or French or Russian, whatever language is that, there's a limit to what you can communicate in that language. But if you pray in the spirit language, it's endless. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit would interpret your words. I was, I, I was listening to one song, and the singer was, the minister was saying, he would say, oh, you know, men will hear, oh, but in the spirit realm, God hears what you're saying. He knows what your needs are. He knows what your heart, that's why, you know, was it 
Brother Wale that was saying this one, that God sees the heart. He knows what's in your heart. He knows that burden that you carry. If you carry a burden for your neighborhood, he knows it. If you've been hearing bad reports about Ashford and you carry that burden in your heart, when you pray, even if you are saying, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, he's seen what you are thanking him for, for that victory concerning that thing, and he would make a way. Lord, help us do so in Jesus' name. Now, brethren, birthing prayers affect, alters your social life. So if you're a social being, if you want to pray birthing prayers, that will bring about, if you want to push, if you want to pray until something happens, the prayers have to be birthed. It will alter your social life. You may not be able to do as you've been doing before. You may not be able to party as you've been partying before. You may not be able to socialize as you've been socializing before. You may not be able to stay on social media as you've been staying on social media before because God will curb some things from our lives. He will restrict you, not because, not because he doesn't want to enjoy, but because he has greater use of your time and of your energy in Jesus' name. So we have to understand that. We have to take a step back to focus. You and I, we have to create times of solitude. So it's you and God. Amen? You have to be prepared to create times of solitude where you can talk to God, you can relax and have him speak to you. Because it's not a one-way conversation. You talk to God in place of prayer. You read the word of God and God speaks to you. Either through his word, either through his prophets, through his spirit, you have to create that time. But when you are busy, 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 you have said your mind, you've gone off, you've gone off. You are praying, you are telling God, I commit my day into your hands. I just ask that you come and lead me. You get up and you go. You've not waited. You jumped into your car. You know whether God is saying, today, don't drive. Take the train. You have not waited for the second part of that. You've gone off. Brethren, as we go forth, let us learn to wait on him so that we can receive from him the direction that we need for our lives. And he will do it for us in Jesus' name. We have to learn to pray without ceasing. We have to identify where we can redeem time for the birthing process. So when you look at your day, you look at the things you would normally do, you have to identify where you can redeem time so you can spend time with God, so that he can speak to you in Jesus' name. And you have to create times of solitude. Intentionally create periods when nothing can interrupt you. Intentionally create it. Periods when nothing can interrupt you. And we can see that example with Jesus. In the book of Matthew chapter 14, verse 23, it says, And when he had turned the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Is there one of us as busy as Jesus was? Praise the Lord. He was preaching, laying hands on people, healing, sorting all their diverse problems. But in spite of all, of all of that, we see over and over in the Bible that he went away. He left his disciples. He set himself apart to spend quality time with his father. How much time are you spending with your father? What is the, what are you doing with that time? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, I know we've started the year with fasting. But brethren, there's still more for you to do. Don't wait till the church calls a fast for you to fast. Amen. As you go through this year, as things come up, let you hear from God. When he says, my brother, my sister, it's time to keep that, your mouth closed. Listen to him. So be prepared to invest in prayer and fasting. Because the Bible says that there are some things that will not go except with prayer and fasting. So it's not everything that you just pray and it's done. There are things that you have to fast. You have to trust God for. And you'll see the change in Jesus' name. And then we need to understand the timing. Understand timing. Because there's, there's time for that God wants to do everything. So understand the timing. If you miss the timing, I always use Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. When they, when they gathered all the princes together and they wanted to feed them with the king's specialty, if those four Hebrew boys had said, ah, we will, st we'll, we'll join for one with them, we'll start, we'll start up a week, they would have missed it. Understand the timing. Because when the Lord makes a way for you, if you do not move when you should, if you now come back and say, now it's time for me to move, that opportunity would have gone. There's a time for everything. And the Lord will help us to maximize our time in Jesus' name. Brethren, this year, avoid distractions. 
Avoid things that are not necessary. You know, it's not everything that is lawful that is for you and I. Some things are lawful, but God has not called you to do it. And some things may be unlawful by the ways of the world. But if that's what God has called you to do, be prepared to stand even if everybody is insulting you. Just know that this is what God wants from me. When you understand time, you know that windows of opportunity can open and they can close. I mean, you're not close to us in Jesus' name. Most importantly, brethren, avoid sin at all costs. Songs of Solomon chapter 2 verse 15 says, Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine. For our vines have tender grapes. Avoid sin at all costs. Don't say it's a little sin. After all, nobody would know. Avoid it at all costs. Run away from it. Because there's no situation that comes your way that God has not made a way of escape for you. You just need to open your eyes to find it. If you are too laid back, you will not see the way of escape. Because you give every excuse possible for those, that thing that you are trying to do. And then we should learn to sense divine displeasure. Don't wait until your pastor says that is not right. Sense displeasure when it comes from the Holy Spirit. And Lord will help us in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I, I will not be brought under the power of any. So some things may be lawful, but it's not expedient. It's not important for us. It doesn't help our cause. It doesn't help our goal. So we don't engage ourselves in it. When it comes to the way you dress, the way you talk, the things you do, it may be lawful to, to do those things. Praise the Lord. But we need to displease God. So learn to sense spiritual displeasure. When God is telling you by his spirit, no. Don't engage in that. Don't be a part of that, my brother, my son. Don't do that. He will help us in Jesus' name. So I want us to just open our mouths and begin to pray, brethren. Begin to thank the Lord for another opportunity he has given you. Let's just thank him for his faithfulness, his love towards us, and his loving kindness. Let's just come before him and say, Father, have mercy upon me. For three days I've gone in this year. Have mercy upon me. Lord, if I have not fulfilled your purpose, please have mercy in the name of Jesus. Anyway, I'm found once daddy, have mercy in Jesus' name. I want you to pray and say, Father, lead me in the way to go. Let me hear a word behind me saying this is the way to go, that I may walk in it. Help me to follow you faithfully in the name of Jesus. Father, help me to follow you faithfully, almighty and eternal king. My Lord and my God, I ask that you help me. Help me, Lord, to follow you faithfully in Jesus' name. We have prayed. I want you to pray and say, Lord, help me to reorganize my priorities. Help me to get my priorities right in the name of Jesus. Help me to get my priorities right in the name of Jesus. Everything that I've allowed to encumber my time, take up my time. That it help me to be able to streamline myself according to your will. Help me to get your priorities right, almighty God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, I just thank you. I bless you for you have proposed to do a new thing in our lives in our homes, in your church. Lord, be thou glorified in Jesus' name. Lord, even as we are trusting you for this new place of worship, we thank you because you would equip us and make us worthy of that place. You give us all that we need to fulfill your purpose in Ashford. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name, we've prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We just want to thank God for that word. Wow mighty the lord is mighty the lord is rich wow we thank god let us all stretch our hands forward to our darling our sister our pastor that the lord god has blessed us with that where she had brought this word from it will not go dry in jesus name the lord god will restore her and as she has preached it it will bring joy to her soul you can see it from her personal experience that she has in the presence of the Lord, that in the name of Jesus, the Lord God will restore, the Lord God will reuse, the Lord God will use her. She will be a blessing to her generation. Her household will be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just thank God for it. More of it in Jesus' mighty name. And as she compliments the ministry, the Lord God will compliment her. The Lord God will compliment her children. The Lord God will surround her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So Father God, we just want to thank you. We thank you for this word. Father God, we will not just be um, a, a, a bad soil that you know when when they, when 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 they spread the seed 
uh, abroad. The, the, the word of God says some fell on good ground, some fell on thorny ground, some fell on hearts that will receive. We pray that our hearts would absorb this word in the name of Jesus Christ. And not only would it absorb, it will, it, will, it, will, it will germinate, it will grow, and it will come forth as a seed for the world to see. All this that we have learned, you will give us the understanding how to walk with you. You know, you were telling Abraham, you said, walk before me and be holy. Father God, you will teach us individually how to walk before you and be holy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You might say, oh, in this context, Country. Yes, in this country. You know, there is time for everything. The Lord God will teach us, show us how we can maneuver, how we can work things out, even in this country, that we think that everything is busy. You know, you know, the Bible says pray without ceasing. If you're a very busy person, you know, God can meet you anywhere you are. You can pray. You can be watching telly and the Lord would say, you know what, I'm taking over that show. Start praying. You can be driving. The Lord God will say, you know what? Start praying concerning this. You can be in the toilets taking care of some business and the Lord God will drop things into your heart and start praying. You know, as your busy schedule, because you know it might be that we are speaking French, that uh, you don't know my schedule. I walk around the clock. As you walk around the clock, our prayer is that the Lord God will walk around us too in the name of Jesus. The Lord God will look at our busy schedule and we will be able to take over our hearts. You know, the most important thing is where is your heart? Where is our heart? Father God, give me a heart. Our prayer is that, Lord, give me a heart that is yearning for you. You know, the, the Bible says that the, 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 the devil is the accuser of brethren. You know, you be report yourself before the devil reports you. You know, you say, Father, here I am, oh, here I am again. Here I am again. Busy body, here I am. I am busy as a beat. Here I am. Father God, help me to fine tune my life. Report yourself. To the Lord before the devil reports you and the Lord God will help all of us because you know what we are all guilty of this but Father is the Lord God Almighty that gives us peace and in the name of Jesus in this household this is actual holy grounds the Lord God has not brought us from the east from the south for nothing he has brought us to this household to purify our our lives to cleanse us so that we can be useful in his vineyard and you know it will come to pass for each and every one of us for in Jesus mighty name we pray hallelujah can we put our hands together for Jesus can we just say father God we just thank you for loving us so much for blessing us so much with a very beautiful and rich word and in the name of Jesus, our lives will never be the same again. We will go and you will back with us. You will teach us in areas that we have to plug ourselves. Lord God, you will use us in the mighty name of Jesus. And you will perfect everything that concerns us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Anyway, by not taking on much of your time, our week starts um, from Monday. We remember we are still in the season in fasting and prayer. And we do have a Zoom um, uh, uh, platform that we pray every day from 8 o'clock tonight with the exception of the weekends. Um, if you don't have that Zoom um, uh, contact, could you please approach either Mommy P here or one of the ushers. They would um, get your number and try and put you onto the um, Zoom so that you can get on and be part of this prayer. Prayer works. Even if you are busy, just put the phone on. You are cooking, just put the phone on. You can't pray, just put the phone on. Just put it on and let these prayers roll. Prayer works. It works. You might not be, you might be going through things. Just put it on. Just let it be in the background and enjoy the atmosphere. So from Monday to Friday, by the grace of God, at 8 o'clock, be on Zoom. We pray. We pray for our family. We pray for everything. And um, on Friday, we pray again from 8 to 9. And on Friday, um, from yeah, every day. And then on Friday, we are um, the um, workers, the, 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 the workers, the, the um, pastors in the house, they pray from nine uh, from 10 o'clock to 12. Um, and <clears throat> on Wednesday, if you do have a youth, if you have a teenage child, on Wednesday from 7 o'clock to 8, please put them on. We are building character character is being built you know when you are training up a child you don't train up a child when the child is like 16 you don't start teaching the child when the child is 10 
you start teaching the child when they say, oh, congratulations, it is a boy, it is a girl. You see, why am I saying that? Even babies have ways that they do manipulate their parents. They say, when, 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 they just want you to pick you up. You say, no, I'm not picking you up. I am teaching you that you learn. It's not each time you see me that you want me to carry you. That's training. So please put your teenage, your young fellow, our young people, put them on the phone on Wednesdays from seven o'clock to eight. It's a blessing and we are building character. So I'm going to um, invite my husband, Pastor Akin, to come and give us the next information. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless. Hallelujah to Jesus. Uh, thank you very much for your patience, you know, and we thank you because of your, uh, you are always present in this place, and God is good. God is good to us. Hallelujah. And um, this, I just want to, this, I want to, to talk to you about this. Um, we want to give everyone this a copy, not a strip, you know, each one of this, just this. We want to give everyone that gives in this church, if you give your offering and your tithe in this church, we want to give you a strip of that so that it will be your own personal um, number. Um, we've been, yes, it's, we need this number anytime we give just put it on the on the envelope and we are not the one that generated it the government i mean did i say government uh, the uh, good to give they call them good to give charity um commission generated it so and they want us to give it to every one of our members so if you want if you if you are giving anything please put it on the just put that number on the envelope and it will help the government, I mean, it, it will help us, help the church in order to take, I mean, in good accounting, we can, we can say, oh, this, this person, I mean, you know, it, it will make us very accountable. You know, it's accountability, transparency, um, whatever it, uh, that is. Hallelujah. Um, so, um, I don't know how to actually do this because I will not be able to go to everybody and I don't want to mention uh, some uh, people's name uh, one by one. Um, yeah, please, maybe the best thing is that uh, you, if you can come, if I, I be, I'll be somewhere there and some of them will be with, the, uh, with uh, Mommy P as well so that you can just Look at the list and get your. If your name is not there, just let us know that your name is not there. Then yours will be generated as well. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. It's actually for taxpayers, so it actually will for taxpayers. Yeah, so it's actually good. Wow. Praise the Lord. Can we all just rise so we can see the uh, grace in fellowship? And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be us now and forevermore. For in Jesus' name we pray. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go and shine. Be a blessing. Thank you.